So, Rianet, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we go into the future, can you tell us a little bit about your own background? Where did you grow up? Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. I grew up in Pretoria. I was born in South Africa, grew up in Pretoria and lived in the States. I was an au pair after school and I lived in America for a while and then came back and have been living in Johannesburg for the last 15 years. So um, I am really thankful that I can say that I am an, a daughter of Africa and I absolutely love South Africa. And tell us, Rianette, what was your dream career when you grew up? I don't actually recall having one dream career. Um, as I grew up, I really had various interests and um, I'm thankful to my parents who exposed me to various different ex things like sport and culture and arts and so forth. So I never actually had that one thing that I wanted to pursue, which was quite tough for me because um, as, as a young girl, and especially when I, I, was, I was a head girl in school, and it's expected of you to know exactly what your plan looks like and where you're going to go and what, how you're going to change the world. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. So that's how I ended up as an au pair in America to really go and first get some life experience. And I'm thankful that my parents let me go. And while I was there, I did various courses um, from reflexology right through to the science of color and um, communication and photography and so forth. And that's when I finally realized that I really have a passion and love for communication. And um, from there, it led me to study public relations and marketing. So I knew when I started to study that it was the right place for me. I absolutely loved it. And um, yeah, so it's quite hard when you're young and you don't really know. And I think for the generations now, I always say to parents, uh, young people are being prepared for jobs that don't exist. So I think it's even harder for young people in this day and age to answer that question. Yeah, definitely. And uh, obviously we met many years ago when you were, um, you were at Prisa, right? the Public Relations Institute of South Africa, I believe. That's correct. Yes, yes, that was, that's correct. I was very involved there. Um, and that is, yo, I think, um, I think it was about 11 years ago already, if I, yeah, if so I yeah. do the maths quickly. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I believe your PR uh, career has also taken you onto radio. You are a radio presenter, you are a TV presenter. Can you tell us a little bit about your public persona? Yes, and it's um, interesting how you say it is the PR career. It, I, I can say thanks to my PR career, I am where I am now, but a shift happened for me and why I got those wonderful opportunities. The, the fact that I did PR for an organization, I did pro bono work for an organization that focuses on the safety of women and young children. And at one of those events, there was a speaker and I th we'll get to that turning point later, but that made me realize I need to make a change in my focus. And that's how I got to do TV presenting and radio presenting and all the, the work that I'm currently doing in the public view and I. The one thing that I can say, though, in terms of a TV show I presented for CakeNet, um, I absolutely am still so thankful for that opportunity because it's it's kind of like a it's something not that not many people know about me is that I really enjoy acting, and I I really keep that little flame burning inside me by acting in advertisements and um, yeah, whenever I can on. TV series and so forth. But the show that I presented for CakeNet was, it was such a wonderful opportunity because I really experienced the behind and in front of the camera um, 
you know, mission and what it entails to have a whole production set up to find the sponsorships, to engage with sponsors and make sure that they get the relevant branding and alignment on the show plus the channel, et cetera. Um, and if, you, if I think if we all look back at our journeys, all those stepping stones that were laid down through our careers, everything that I learned in my PR and communications journey prepared me for all the things that I've experienced in the last four or five years. So I was the one who did media training for clients to teach them how to really deal with the media and how to manage the technical side of interviews, the microphones and what to wear and what not to wear. And now I am actually the one using that, those tips for the work that I do. And tell us, uh, you're currently still running your radio show, I believe. Um, I did the radio show at Cliff Central for two years um, mm -hmm. with my colleague, Timothy Maurice Webster. And we did that for two years, but then we changed our strategy. So it's not currently running at the moment, but people can still access the podcasts. Um, so, yeah, that's, that was a wonderful experience as well. And it was part of it, or it was the time when Cliff Central started and it was such a privilege and really great opportunity to be part of the team um, with Rena Brimberg and, you know, Gareth Cliff to see how that whole new online radio and digital podcasting and so forth was perceived and how people reacted to it because now we can see the value now, but back in that you know year when we were busy with that people were still skeptical for especially from a marketing point of view so it was really a great honor to be part of that and uh, looking back over your early career and maybe uh, again when you grew up who inspired you and and what were your sources of inspiration well the closest source to me was my my parents and um my especially my dad he's got a very positive outlook on life and they always taught me and it's something that we hear quite often now but i i never realized it then but they taught me to fail forward and they always encouraged me to try something new they let me know that i might not be the best in everything but then at least i've tried and i can choose what i love and what i how i want to move forward um so for that i'm very thankful and my mom who actually you know gave up you know half of her day to drive me around and take me to modern dancing lessons and be next to the hockey field and be there to cheer me on when i was performing something on stage so my parents definitely and then um in Proverbs, it's the book in the Bible, Proverbs, it contains so many practical lessons and guidance, especially from a leadership point of view. Um, yeah, I used to, you know, there's 31 Proverbs um, chapters, and mm -hmm. that's one for every day of the month. And yeah, so that those two things really, really got me um, or inspired me, but also kept me motivated. And then, of course, throughout my journey in life, there were many people that, you know, either said something or believed in me that I am forever grateful for and to because it's like, you know, it's that teacher who says something at the right time or maybe sometimes something negative and it just motivates you. It just gets you so annoyed that you want to prove them wrong. So, um, but those two, I, I would definitely highlight. And tell us, Rianet, looking back over your career, would you say there was a major turning point where things could have gone different, but you decided to take your career in a certain direction? I think um, the first part of my career journey was the public relations, um, you know, career. And I still love public relations and the impact it has and so forth. But then going back to what I said earlier in terms of that client that I did work for at one of the events we hosted, there was a speaker who spoke about the alarming and really shocking statistics of young people who commit suicide because of cyberbullying. And um, Nick, this is really where my heart broke. I couldn't understand how, someone's with the whole future in front of them could feel so devastated that they would 
actually go that far and that there was nowhere to turn. And I didn't know much about cyber safety and cyber security at that stage. Um, and we're talking about the year 2014. Um, it was very, even though my, my PR career was based on technology brands um, and, you know, like from, oh, I don't need to mention the brands, but some of them were international brands as well. And even though I had that te technology background, I didn't really, really know much about cybersecurity. And then my journey started to investigate. And I even went to the World IT Conference in Mexico, just really trying to get a better understanding of the issue. And I realized two things. I realized that we needed more awareness. And six years ago, people were, they listened. Then they were like, yes, yes, yes. We, we hear it's a big problem, but it doesn't affect us yet. And the other problem was that we had nowhere to go to if we were cyber crime victims. I mean, think about it. You can't necessarily go to the police station and say my identity has been stolen online or I'm being cyber bullied or, you know, sextortion and so forth. So that's where Safety Net Cyber Safety was born um, to answer those two needs. And that was a really big turning point for me because I was running this um, PTY communications firm and then I started a nonprofit company which from an entrepreneurial point of view was very interesting and fascinating you know you learn about a lot, the companies act and the King Report re applies to both it's um, definitely doesn't mean if it's a nonprofit company that you shouldn't have you know money in the bank in fact we need the millions in the bank so that we can have a bigger impact but it was very fascinating from that point of view and that's where my career took a big turn and tell us how bad is cyber bullying today in south africa um recent studies done by ipsos and um, has shown that um, south africa is at the top of the list in terms of parents saying that they know someone or their own children have been victimized and through cyberbullying. It is a, it's globally such a big problem because it's not something that happens once off. It's a continual um, series of messages and, you know, images, competitions, kids use um, videos, etc to deliberately harm someone or you know make them um, feel insecure and damage their reputations and so forth and we don't understand and i think we underestimate the emotional impact of these messages because unfortunately we we tend to even if we've got 600 positive messages, we go back to those negative ones and people, especially young people, especially teenagers, they've got so much to deal with already. Peer pressure, um, you know, puberty, not understanding where they fit in, never mind understanding what career journey they're gonna be on and now. They also have this online identity and many of them are going through a crisis because they are expected to have these filters and thousands of likes and so forth. And then you have the bullies. Um, and so the impact and the problem is huge at the moment. So, Rianet, what is driving you today? I am on a mission to save lives, Nick, because I need to make sure that people get the information to first of all, stay safe and make sure that when they are traveling in cyberspace, they know where the risks are. They see the opportunities because the cyberspace is so amazing and it connects us to different worlds. And I always say um, the internet is like a highway. You know, we've got, we can go anywhere and it takes us there fast and we can connect with people around the globe. And through VR and virtual reality and augmented reality and artificial intelligence, I mean, there are really no boundaries. However, as on any other highway, there are drunk drivers and people without licenses. And the drunk drivers are the criminals. And they are there to steal. They steal information and data and identities and money and sometimes even children. And then on the other hand, we have the ones without their licenses. And these are the young ones the, because no one has taught a child how to be safe online. They just 
get the phone and it's put in their hands or the tablets. So my mission is to save lives so that people know where the risks are and if they get in trouble, that they actually have a place to go to. Now, Rianette, let's talk about leadership. And I know it's a big question, but what does the future of leadership mean to you? I think we have the responsibility and the opportunity to reach the new generations and learn from older, more experienced generations. Um, the future of leadership, I really think, is also based on values. Um, values, relationships, those two things are so key. Because when we have our foundation and it's solid, then there's something that we can work from. And I also think that, um, you know, there's always, the, and I'm sure you've heard the saying of each one teach one. There's always someone older that we can learn from. And there's always someone younger that we can teach something to. And then again, we need to be open as leaders to learn from younger people um, and to see how they perceive the world. But for me, at the end of the day, um, we also need to be able to know when there's a necessary ending coming. Um, and I refer back to Dr. Henry Cloud's book, um, Necessary Endings. That book has really been a guiding factor for me. So as leaders in the future, and like now, what we're going through with the COVID-19 virus, we we need to see when something has got a necessary ending and then also ask better questions like how can we do the same thing in a different way and ask it to different people with a various or a variety of perspectives so that we can as leaders understand the future better. And Rianette, what have you learned from your own journey that you consider most important for building future leaders? I think having um, a teachable spirit. We have to be open to learning all the time and understanding that we definitely don't know it all. Yes, we might be more knowledgeable in the area of our focus, but really what I've seen and where I am today is not because of me. It's because of a collaboration. It's because of other people who've laid those stepping stones for me who were willing to believe in me and sometimes think um, or dream bigger than I am dreaming. And they then, you know, make the suggestion, like, for instance, one, one example is Timothy who said, I can be on his show on Cliff Central let's share the hour airtime. And I was like, but Tim, I've never done a uh, radio interviews and or I've done interviews, but I haven't done a show. I don't know how to produce it. And he's like, but I know you can do it. <laughs> and I made it happen. So for me, having a teachable spirit and being open to then uh, taking those opportunities and then on the other hand, to also do the same for others because it's so easy for us to, to actually advance someone else's career journey. For me now on a practical level, I, whenever I can, I take someone with me when I do a TV interview or when I, do, when I record videos at home, I involve my son and whoever else wants to be in the room. You know, so we can always open the door for someone else as well. And then one day they will be able to say, oh, Red Ed laid that stepping stone for me. She was part of my journey. And Rianette, let's touch on social media. When you speak to aspiring leaders, what is it you tell them about social media? How should they use social media to build their own leadership brand? Well, there are two approaches. The one for me is, of course, you need to have your own online presence. And so that if someone Googles your name or they want to see what you focus on, then they can find you. But something that works better for me instead of building my own profile on my platforms, I am actually aligned to certain brands and I collaborate with brands where they have the humongous following and they have their audience and I bring the value to that audience. So um, for me, that works quite well because then it's a collaboration effect 
I actually am able to bring the value to them on a topic that they are not experts on and they feel that they are, you know, be, that, that they've got access to my knowledge. And for me, it's a fantastic opportunity because they are giving me the stage to share my message with the audience. So sometimes we can easily judge someone's social media following but not realizing that they're actually being featured on bigger platforms. So I just want to encourage people to say, listen, even if you don't have a huge following, it's, it's okay because where your voice matters is where you're going to focus. Now, when you speak to aspiring leaders, what is your advice for the challenges they should expect in their career, especially in a leadership career? I think um, people, that's our biggest challenge <laughs> because right. people are so different. Um, I mean, when you start looking at all these amazing um, brain profiling and personality profiling tools that are out there, we, we can see why people each have their own strengths, each have their own um, attributes that they bring to the party. And if we can zone in a little bit to, to understand what makes people tick and what is their perfect environment to work in and what's their stress factors and so forth, then that will help us. But I, I don't know if there is a, a recipe, but that's why I would say that's our biggest challenge. But it's also a wonderful opportunity because it keeps the journey of leadership and um, growth so exciting because there's always something new to learn from other people as well right absolutely in fact in terms of learning if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders what are some of some of the new skills you would want to factor in that's an interesting one i would say number one would be conversation because i I'm a bit worried about, and this is from my, the work that I do to see how, how people are changing the, or the way we communicate has already changed drastically. But um, I'm a bit concerned about young people, especially when it comes to having conversations and being able to get to know someone on an interpersonal level. Um, because they are building relationships on platforms and through emojis and you know gifts and not really having a conversation looking someone in the eye that's why i would add it um, to to the list and i would also from a leadership point of view i guess i would like to add to that list tenacity and to help them to really just be thick-skinned in this world that we are currently living in and especially the world that young people are growing up in because it is so harsh. It is so direct and honest. And um, when I say honest, I'm, I actually mean more, I think people are so direct. In the past, there was quite, you, you would count your words. Now it's just given to you. Um, so I would like to add those two things to the list. And then of course, again, um, continuous learning but i do think that from a young point young person's point of view they are open to learning and they are adaptable it's more the the older generations i think are struggling and i can see that with from a cyber security and cyber safety point of view it's it's tough for some leaders to adapt to the way young people and their teams are communicating now we unfortunately can't do it the way we did in the past. Right. Now, as a mentor to future leaders, Rianette, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? Yes. So I think from a mentoring point of view, I'm so thankful for the mentors in my life and um, I belong to some international networks where I have exposure to people from all over the world mentoring me, but I also have had the opportunity to mentor 
uh, people in other countries. And the one that comes to mind for me now is um, she is younger than I am and a younger leader, but she manages quite a big team. And what was inspiring for me or to me was from a cybersecurity level, she actually has more experience than I have. But what I could bring to her was to talk about or mentoring her about how to communicate within the team, to motivate the team, to get them to, to the same goal. And it was, it was so, it was learning for me because in the beginning I thought, what do I have to teach her? And then I realized, but where my strong points are, she actually took the advice. I shared with her some um, presentation skills, how to work with microphones, etc., how to position things in a different way. So her messaging and so forth. And she took it and it's actually made her, or part of it was her promotion. But I just, I was so thankful that someone who was quite senior in certain aspects were willing to take the advice. And then recently, um, someone in South Africa, um, yeah. it's a young woman and she is very focused on artificial intelligence and so forth. But what I love about her is her willingness to learn and to show up. Um, she's based in Cape Town and I'm in Joburg, but whenever I go there, again, I, I try to connect with her and I invite her to come with me to a TV station so that I can do an interview and just her openness to learn uh, that's that's the type of thing that i see that will definitely take someone forward and tell us in your career if you come across role models of leadership that you would recommend um, future leaders should learn from yes there there are a couple um and they are quite different from each other um and people that i I've learned a lot from. So, well, a TEDx talks I need to put at the top of the list because everyone there are actually influencing us. And of course, um, our beloved Nelson Mandela would always be someone that we have all learned from. Mm -hmm. um, but from a, from a spiritual point of view, there are many people that I, that I listen to um, and that I learn from there. And, they include Beth Moore. And I, what I like about Beth Moore is that she's actually created so many training courses and videos and, and platforms where groups of people can get together, learn about the word and um, grow together. Um, and the way she's done it was for me was interesting because she's been doing it for so many years. Um, so for me, from a leadership point of view, that was like, she started, way back when with her DVD series and so forth. And I'm learning from her all the time. Then uh, someone like Dr. Henry Cloud to me is also someone that's really impacted the way I've um, looked at my journey and decisions that I've taken. And from a local point of view, I have to say that there are, are many, but some of them are not that well known. And I just, they, they know how I feel about them because I thank them all the time for the leadership role that they play in my life. Now, Rianette, how can our listeners connect with you and where should they follow you? Um, I am on most of the platforms. Um, I'm even on TikTok. <laughs> oh, really? um, but I, <laughs> I have to be. I mean, this is my market that I speak to. These young ones are all, you know, playing on TikTok and um, Snapchat and so forth. But the more traditional ones is LinkedIn, of course, and Facebook. On Facebook, um, I have a page and I've got my own personal profile. And I recently started um, two new sections or pages the one is digital parenting and the other one is digital ouderskap in afrikaans and um i did that specifically so that it relates to my book that i just launched um and yeah then of course on twitter and instagram and tell us which book did you just launch i'm so excited about this book because it's after the last five or six years of living in the cyber safety space and helping 
so many victims um, that I just realized I need to put it all together in one package for parents, not just for parents. It's anyone who's actually working with kids, you know, parents, grandparents, all pairs, uncles and aunts. Um, and I, I took, look, when, when we speak about victim support and the work that I do at, with safety net and through safety net, when you have a father on the other side of the phone crying because his daughter's photos, um, private photos have gone public, um, then, you know, there's someone who's devastated or school principals to phone and say they've got a sexting problem in school or whoever. I just wanted to use that experience, put it into a book. It's 50, there are 50 topics plus a DVD with 20 additional topics. And it's all written in a way that parents can talk to their kids about this stuff because we have to, we can't be like in the past, you know, the birds and the bees whole discussion. It, we cannot be um, shy about things because if we don't teach our kids, either Google or someone else will. And that's the book. The purpose of the book is just to make it easy for parents and um, families so, to, to talk about it. So when are you launching? So the Afrikaans version launched in um, beginning of March, which was so interesting in terms of timing and it's available online. It's a physical book, but people can't get to that at the moment. That there's a physical book and then an e-book, and the English version will be ready in May. Um, it will be ready electronically, like in an e-book format, but with the situation that we're going through and all businesses that's been shut down, I'm not sure exactly when the printed version will be ready, but it will be this year in 2020. Um, so. I'm very, very excited about that. And I trust that with more cyber savvy families, we will have a safer internet. That's great. I'm really looking forward to that. And last but not least, Rianette, is there one thing, one advice that you would really like to convey to future leaders that they should implement in their own lives and in their own leadership? Um, yes, and it relates to my cyber safety message, and that is be careful what you do with your fingertip, because it's with our fingertips that we are typing messages and we are taking photos and videos and sharing and retweeting. And it's quite ironic because it's our identity, your, your physical fingerprint that we use to create a digital identity and your digital footprint as a leader, will definitely impact the way people are going to perceive you and the opportunities you're either going to get or not. Because when someone Googles your name, you want it to be a pretty picture. So let's be responsible with our fingertips. Well, Rianette, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future and especially for giving us a really good look into cybersecurity and uh, how we should build our brand uh, online. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everything that you are teaching us through these um, amazing interviews. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Rianette, and all the best for your book launch. Thank you so much, Nick. Appreciate it.